Hello there, Drew Hannish and Whiskey Lore with a, another tasting video today. And today I want to start off by, first of all, saying a big thank you out to Matt, uh, Matt Manzilla, I have to say it properly. Uh, he has been a longtime supporter of, of Whiskey Lore's Patreon, and you help support the show, and I really, really appreciate that. And so I wanted to send you a shout out if you guys want to help out. Uh, keep things on the road, then all you have to do is just, for the price of a bottle of whiskey, head to patreon.com slash whiskey lore, and I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. You help keep me in whiskey. Okay, we're going to do a tasting today of Blackened, and this is a Dave Pickerel project, something he did before he passed away back in 2018. He did it with the band Metallica. Part of the reason why I'm kind of glad I got this bottle is I get a chance to have my Metallica rant. <laughs> um, the first album I ever bought by Metallica was the And Justice For All album. And there's something very weird about that album. If you listen to Metallica, that one album probably stands out sonically. It's very different from all the other ones. And the reason is... On the previous albums, Cliff Burton was the bass player. Jason Newstead came in because Cliff Burton passed away. And so when Jason Newstead came in, all of a sudden Lars Ulrich, the drummer, was in the studio telling the engineer to keep dropping and dropping the bass. To dropping, not in making it lower in terms of resonance, but... Like, let's take it out of the mix so that you can almost not hear it at all so that the drums come thundering through and that's really all you hear. So the problem with that album is that it's thin. And Jason Newstead is a great bass player and I have no idea why Lars's ego is so big that he had to bury good bass playing. But that's what happens anyway. That's uh, so... When I saw Blackened, I was like, it's just going to be thin whiskey. Because, <laughs> you know, it's it's coming from uh, the, the name of the song. Like I said, I like all the songs on that album. I just have a real problem with the sound quality on it, and so I don't listen to it. It's the one Metallica album of the early stuff that I don't listen to. And I listened to them through the Black album, and then I kind of gave up on them after that. A couple of songs I really like. Death Magnetic was a decent album, but um, uh, I think the one that they did with the orchestra, um, I'm going to forget, the s and is the name of the album. Uh, I've forgotten it. Four Leaf, no, no Leaf Clover, that's it. Love that song, love that song. But anyway, that's my Metallica rant before we go in and do a tasting on Black. And so I, if you wonder why I haven't done a tasting on this, that would be a good reason why, is because I had this impression that it would be a thin whiskey and not something that I would really enjoy. Plus, I'm almost not wanting to support Lars Ulrich at this point, but I got to let that bias go and just be a whiskey fan and see what this is all about. So this is a blend of different whiskeys. And the first thing you're going to notice about it is how light it is. I mean, for something that's a blend of whiskeys from America, aged in bourbon barrels, it's a mixture of bourbon and rye. That's light. I mean, that's that's lighter than, you know, Johnny Walker uh, and, and scotches that are usually lighter and have been maybe colored to enhance them. So it makes me think that there's some fairly young whiskeys in here. Or maybe they're using light whiskeys. I don't know. I don't know what they're doing, but for some reason it's a bit lighter than your average bourbon whiskey. So let's see how that um, translates to the tongue and to the nose. And what they do on this, by the way, the gimmick here, you know, celebrities are coming out with a lot of whiskeys. And the idea on this one is almost like the aged at sea idea of the rocking motion is supposed to help it age faster. And so that, again, leads me to believe there's some pretty young whiskeys in here. But the idea is that they 
take all these whiskeys that they found, they blend them together, and then they finish aging them in um, black brandy casks. And so what does that do to the whiskey? Well, not as much, according to them, as what they do after that. They put these things in front of a sound system and they play Metallica music to the whiskey. So uh, if you're paying an you know, extra four or five dollars for this whiskey, uh, just because it's getting entertained by uh, Metallica and the electric bill is a little bit higher. I don't know. Um, it's actually not an overly expensive whiskey, but it again, that's just what they do. It feels very gimmicky to me. I don't know. Does it make a difference in the whiskey? Honestly, I don't care if they send it off in a rocket ship and bring it back. If it's a good whiskey, it's a good whiskey. That's kind of my opinion on it. So, all right, on the nose, it has a really nice nose. It's subtle, um, but you're pulling in some, some stone fruits in there. Um, it has a, a creme brulee, vanilla meets creme brulee. A little bit of oak in there, but I mean, just slight. And I have picked up a little pepper note on it. It's actually a really pleasant nose. Mm. So there's a nice berry component to this. It's got kind of a sweet grain flavor, but there's this raspberry that's going on over the top that's really nice. It ends off in a in a peppery heat. Um, and then this black cherry comes in. Grain is still there. And then that black cherry is just lingering on the finish. It's got a medium mouthfeel to it. It's not overly heavy. Again, I am fascinated by the fact that this whiskey does not really have any kind of a youthful flavor to it, and yet it is so light in color. Um, this is the kind of color that bourbon fans usually make fun of, because they'll say, I mean, the, they'll talk about scotch and say how light a color it is, and they'll come up with all sorts of well, ways to insult it. But Again, it's down to, does the whiskey taste good? Does the whiskey not taste good? And in this particular case, it is a nice, pleasant tasting whiskey. I don't know that I would put ice in this. I definitely am not going to put any water in it. It's at 45% ABV, and I think that suits it nicely. So it's not thin like I thought it was going to be. So thank you for not being inspired by that particular album, Dave Pickerel, because this actually worked out really well. Their distiller now is Rob Dietrich, by the way, and he is from Stranahan's. He was at Stranahan's before that. So doing a, a fine job with this. Am I going to buy a bottle of it? I don't know. I mean, I wouldn't, I, I, I wouldn't turn it down. I mean, uh, I, I think it's a pretty interesting whiskey. So on my scale, uh, where I go from no to excellent, I'm going to put this in the good category, which is right smack dab in the middle. I think it's a good whiskey. Uh, it's something that I would consider purchasing, but I'm probably not going to rush out and buy it. I just think that it's, it is a good, substantial whiskey. That is my review of Blackened. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like the video. And subscribe if you want to have more alerts when I'm putting these videos out. For the next little while, I'm going to be putting out one a day. So there's going to be a lot of different whiskeys that I'm going to be covering. And so I hope you enjoy. And until next time, cheers and slanjava.